Hey guys, cold weather's here. I'm still growing stuff in the greenhouse and people are wondering how do I keep it warm. This is what I use right here. I have two double barrel stove setups. Very easy to put together. A lot of things you can do to seal these things up and make them function just like the furnace in your house with the exception of you having to replace the fuel source. I haven't made a whole lot of changes since last winter with this other than I did take the little uh, 15 inch box fan down that I had up in the top right and I have replaced that with a high velocity fan. That thing really pushes the air out of that compartment. It does a good job. When you go to look for a barrel stove kit, this is probably what you're going to see most common right here. The one from Vogelzang. There is another one option from US Steel. And Vogelzang has a deluxe model that actually has the gaskets around the door and they also have an ash drawer at the bottom. Trying to clean out a 55 gallon drum with a little uh, three, four inch ash door at the bottom doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So I didn't go that route. I just clean it out with a shovel. And if you want to do a double barrel, then you need the, uh, the kit that's on the right hand side, the double barrel adapter kit. That allows you to stack two barrels, one on top of the other. Basically, it's a, the uh, secondary heat exchanger allows you to extract even more heat from the wood as opposed to letting it all go up the, uh, the chimney stack. I bought these from Northern Tool, but you can get them online at different places too. And like I said, you don't have to go with the Vogelzang. You can use the other US Steel model, probably work just as good. You can see how they stack up nice and neat using the legs that come out of the adapter kit. You also get the two six inch collars one for each barrel to make the, uh, the junction between the two. What you don't get is a piece of pipe or anything to go between the two collars themselves. You're gonna have to make up your own. Uh, I couldn't find anything specifically made for that, so I just cut down a piece of uh, extra pipe, put that on the inside, taped it up real good, and then come on the outside of it and put me a piece of a heavy galvanized flashing and a couple of six inch clamps and got this thing pretty much airtight. One of the best moves I made when I set this up back in January after I saw what was happening, I came back and put this uh, bubble wrap aluminum on all of the wall surfaces and that really kept the heat from trying to go through the wall and made it come back into the greenhouse. On the back side there, I have a six foot roll up curtain. Bought that from Lowe's, took me some of this uh, foil bubble wrap, taped it to it, made it so I could roll it up and that will actually uh, separate my wood source from the stove and keep the heat from trying to go back into the wood and trying to heat that compartment. I wanted all the heat coming out of this little room that I could possibly get. When I come out here at night, all I do is raise my curtain. There's the wood that I need. Pick out what I want, load my stove, drop the curtain back down, and go on about my business. I mentioned putting a gasket inside the door. What I have done is just come back and line this with a gasket so that when I close this door at night, I can get a pretty airtight seal and that will keep this thing from wanting to keep burning once my fan goes off. Basically I wanted to shut down and go into an idle mode for a little while. I like to use the barrels that have the removable lids on them because it was just easier for me to put this whole thing together when I could take the lid off and get up in here and work on all these little screws and stuff. And when I put the lid back on, I come back inside and put another gasket inside the rim of the lid. That way I could keep that airtight seal. The barrels are gonna come with a little uh, rubber seal inside of this. That is not what you wanna use. That thing will melt and make a stinking mess and just absolutely not work. You need to change this out and put a regular uh, rope gasket inside of it. When I put this together, I make sure that the two inch bung hole is at the bottom. This is the one that I'm using for the air intake. Notice I don't have this sliding damper on here. That is all sealed up. I don't need that. All of the air that this uh, wood is going to get is going to come through this opening right here. That's why I say it's so critical to make sure you have a good gasket around your door and also a good gasket around the rim of your lid. You want to make sure that you're in control of what this fire is doing as opposed to just letting it burn nonstop. That's going to use up a whole lot of wood. This functions just like your furnace in the house. I've got it hooked up with a fan, thermostat, Thermostat kicks in, fan comes on. I've got forced air coming in the bottom and that's gonna build up the fire. Heats really well. Once the temperature gets to the desired level, thermostat tells the fan to shut off. 
the airflow right here stops, that fire begins to die down. And it'll do that until the next time the uh, thermostat tells it to kick back on. This works just like your furnace in the house. Your electric furnace, gas, oil furnace works the, exactly the same way with the one exception that I don't have an infinite fuel source. When you have your big oil tank outside or a gas tank, you've got electricity running your electric furnace or heat pump, you have a pretty much infinite fuel source as far as you're concerned at the time anyway. And you don't have to worry about replacing that. Using a barrel stove, every few hours, give or take three, four, five hours, whatever it is, I have to replace the fuel source. This is what makes the whole thing go. The blower, the uh, air intake, and also pulling air from the outside. Right here is the two inch line going into the bottom of the stove. This blower right here came off of a gas furnace. I hooked it up last year or last winter the first time and I found out that it was way too strong. I had to figure out a way to throttle this thing back. I hooked it up on a variable speed and I just didn't like it. I didn't feel like it was a good idea to try and, trying to throttle this motor back. So I had to do something different. And what I've got right here is a three inch air intake. This is pulling the air from outside of the greenhouse. Rather than running like an open fireplace where every cubic foot of air that goes up the stack has to be replaced by air from somewhere else, generally it's pulling air from all the cracks of the house. What this does is allow me to bring the cold air from outside of the greenhouse. So I've got a three inch intake right here coming through, goes back to two inches. And the first time I had it hooked up going straight in, it was way too strong. So what I decided I would do, I would put a T on it and I would divert it back outside. And with this ball valve right here, just a regular uh, two inch PVC ball valve, I can control how much air goes in the bottom of this furnace. Now this is kind of redneck engineering, but it worked and I mean, it works good. If I need to uh, really dump some air in there, I can open this thing up all the way. I've got a mark right here where I generally leave it at. That's what I have found, a nice comfortable range. But this is what allows me to use this stove just like your furnace. I'm sure there are much neater, cleaner ways to probably do this for you guys that are engineers and things could come up with a lot better uh, options to do it. But this is what works for me, nice and simple. I've got my air coming from outside of the greenhouse goes through here and this is how I control the flow going into the bottom of it and the thermostat tells it when to kick on and off. It's a pretty simple process and works extremely well. This is one of the thermostats that I use. Most any greenhouse supplier is going to carry these. This particular one is manual, has a three and a half to I think 11, 12 degree differential on it so I could adjust exactly when I wanted the fans to kick on and off, what type of range I wanted to maintain in here. Right now, three and a half, four degrees is uh, plenty. Now, I think that's what you call a roaring fire. I like to put the wood in there, put the long pieces in, being as how you're working with a barrel, you can put 24, 28, you know, 30 inch piece of wood in here if you want to, and then take your short pieces and cross them, and then put some more long pieces on top of them, and really create a lot of heat. When this gets really, really cranked up, that top barrel up there will get up to six, 700 degrees, and you can imagine what the bottom one is. These barrel stoves may not be for everybody, but they put out a lot of heat. It's a really cheap way to heat a greenhouse. And I have a few more things to talk about here. The first one being the suggestion for using a rocket stove to heat a long hoop house like this. I had a chance to talk with the man himself recently, Paul Wheaton, and we talked about the rocket stoves and greenhouse heating. And for the most part, a configuration like this, being so long with no insulated surfaces whatsoever, just plastic, it doesn't lend itself to the, uh, the rocket mass heater configuration. There are some things that I could do uh, if I was starting from scratch, a totally different design to incorporate using the ground temperatures where I might could uh, work that in, but as a general rule, these long hoop houses, it's just not gonna be uh, something that's gonna be easily done. Also, there's a big difference between using a barrel stove to heat a greenhouse and using it to heat your shop, garage, or something like that. If something goes wrong in your shop, you just open the doors, you let it air out, get all the smoke out of there, no harm done. 
if you let this thing sit out here overnight and something goes wrong and you don't catch it you come back out here the next morning and your plants have been here all night long in a smoke filled greenhouse that's not something that you want to have happen when you come out here first thing in the morning or when you walk into your greenhouse first thing in the morning after you've been burning wood all night long if you have this thing set up properly sealed up functioning and running the way i have it right now when you walk in the door you should not be able to smell any smoke. Nobody should be able to know what you have been heating with. If you smell smoke, you've got an air leak somewhere and you need to take care of it. Something that will make your life a whole lot easier is a wireless thermometer. I mentioned this in the past. This is my transmitter for a temp minder. Got the base inside the house. Got about a 300 foot range, supposedly. It works very well. The base inside that I have has a low temperature alarm on it so I can set it and if something happens and maybe the back door flies open or I misjudge how fast the wood's going to burn up and the temperatures drop too fast, wakes me up, say get out of the bed boy and go put some wood in that stove. Go find out what the problem is. That's a wonderful thing to have. There's a couple of options for the stove pipe. You can go to Lowe's or Home Depot and get the kind that's kind of fold it out in a semicircle and press them together in the little groove, get the black pipe. That'll it'll work i've did that kind of to start out with and since i went over to the other uh, solid pipes i think that's just a much more rigid uh much better situation to be in i don't use a grate anymore i know it's nice to have the wood up and be able to get the airflow up under it and it really helps that fire get going and creates a lot of heat but what i found was it did not take long before the coals to drop down into that grate and I could not pull them back forward and get up in there and, and get things situated like it needed to be done. So no more great. What I do is I'll push everything to the back, mix it in and pull the biggest coals to the front and start stacking the wood on top. Go one direction, uh, perpendicular and then go back the long way again and that gets the job done. In the process of doing this, you're going to become very familiar with the weather outside. I use a site called weatherspark.com. Type in your zip code and they will give you the hour by hour forecast on a graph where you can see what the temperatures are expected to be. That will let you know how fast the temperatures are going to be dropping and what your plan should be for that night. Once in a while I get tricked. I'm expecting the temperatures to be falling. It gets dark. The temperatures are going on down. I'm getting my barrels loaded. Got the fire going and all of a sudden the front comes up from the south with warm air and instead of going down the temperatures begin to rise and then i have to make some adjustments just cut back on the wood that i'm putting in for the night and try to get things caught back up also if you have any intention whatsoever of heating with a barrel stove i would say go get you some wood yesterday don't wait until you build the stove and then go start looking for wood and try to figure out what you're going to do and get in a situation like i was my first season with this where i was out there trying to cut rotted stuff lay downs that are, you know already pithy on the outside just scrounging around for wood if you have good dry seasoned wood burns a whole lot better the heat output is a lot greater it's a lot easier to get that fire started and it make your life a whole lot less stressful these barrel stoves are easy to put together. They're fairly inexpensive. They don't cost a whole lot to get started. If you've got your own supply of wood, you save a whole lot of money there. Really good way to try to heat a building, a shop, garage, greenhouse. All of those things work out just fine. Just pay attention to what you're doing. Learn how this thing works. Learn how the fire will perform the best. Pay attention to the smell understand how the draft is working and if you get a situation where the fire doesn't seem like it's burning quite like it should you're probably going to need to check your stove pipe might have a little bit of creosote up there or getting a little bit stopped up uh, check on that from time to time run that long uh, pole up in it with the wire brush keep it cleaned out and you shouldn't have any trouble with it this is a great way to get the job done and be able to heat like a long greenhouse right here so you can grow vegetables all the way through the winter so hope that was helpful Y'all take care, and Lord willing, I'll see you next time.